Okay, this is uh, the fifth class. On Bishaw Sha'Allah Moisha Lamodim. And I guess we could say that this class, Mitz Hashem, is the point of this whole Arichas. I'm going to start the class to an extent disconnected from the previous four. I'm not going to give you a chazara, you know. I'm going to start it and I'm going to repeat only what is important for what follows. And we'll go from that perspective and then as the introduction and class develop, I'll visit the ideas we had in the previous classes. But I want to start from a new perspective, so to speak. And it's really the second class that I gave you. What you really take out of this Maimir is that in Hishtashlos, there's a Chitzenius and a Pneumius. There's an outer Hishtashlos and a Pneumius Hishtashlos. What's strange about it is that the Chitzenius Hishtashlos happens first. And the Pneumius Hishtashlos happens subsequent. Why? Because Hashem created say the Ishtalshalos, and Ishtalshalos means Tzir, Eleme, Svidis, and worlds. And then there is Isarusa del Tata, Isarusa del Yela, how the end of Ishtalshalos reflects itself back upwards, which creates the idea of Kamayim upon him, upon him, and as we'll see in Mitzvah Shem today or in the next class, depending on how this class goes, also the Kain Leiv Ha'odam Al Ha'odam. And what's strange about it, what's ironic about it, what's oxymoronic about it is that it turns out that the, the if you will, the Urchaizer Hishtalshalos, the Hishtalshalos, which is not based on how things descend from a higher level to a lower level, but the Hishtalshalos, which has to do with Sarusa de la Tata, Sarusa de la Eila, where the lower levels rise up and impress themselves on the higher levels. Kamayim aponim leponim and kain leva adam adam. That is deeper than the first Ishtal Shalos. That's the Pneumius versus the Chitzenius of Ishtal Shalos. And what is the difference? Again, to use words, because that's all we can do is use words. The Chitzenius Ishtal Shalos has more to do with Tzir and Metzius. The Pneumius Ishtal Shalos has much more to do with Pshitos and Ein Seif. And I can learn the Maimir, I can teach the Maimir, uh, but I can't really explain the Maimir. I- I'm going to learn this with us. The, the Higoyen, the Svara, that lies at the end or the depth of this Maimir, the Rebbe doesn't illustrate, he doesn't use a marshal for it, he simply proves it or argues it or establishes it as a fact. The derher, to sense it, to feel it, uh, you need to do a hisbonenus yourself. You need to think about it. You need to try and get into that world in order to be able to relate to it. And it's, it's not an easy thing to do, even on a level of seichel and higoyen, and certainly not on a level of life and avoidum. Because as I explained it to you, as I told you in the beginning, in my introductory shir, The whole point of Kabbalah is to allow the meeting between Ain Seif and worlds. That's the whole point. Before Kabbalah, there's two things, Bairi and Nivra. Bairi is the Ebishter, Nivra is us. There's no relationship. That's all. We have nothing in common. The whole idea of a Nivra growing or coming closer to Hashem is really nothing other than the Nivra coming closer to his own possibility. But there's no relationship between Bairi and Nivra. In Kabbalah, you have what's called Ma'atzil and Ne'etzal, or Elokus, Adam and Mo'id and Adam, Ain Seif and Sviris. And the whole point of Kabbalah is that because there is godliness, Elokus, there is a notion of us being able to relate to godliness and Elokus being able to relate to us because of the principle of Gilui and Amshacha and Islapshus and so on. So, if the whole point of Kabbalah is a meeting between the Ain Seif and worlds, the ultimate concept of Kabbalah would be the highest meeting with the Pshitas of Ain Seif and worlds. The higher a level of Ain Seif, the more partial the level of Ain Seif, 
which interacts with worlds, the more complete this purpose of creation, you know, which is called in the language of the Mekubalim, L'shem Yichud Kochebrich Hoshkinte, L'yachda Kochebrich Hoshkinte, is achieved. If a lower level of Elokus, a level of Elokus which has more tier, reaches worldliness, it's less of a Chiddush, then a higher level of Elokus, a more plain level of Elokus, uh, reaches worldliness. And what this Maimon argues is that the true Pshitas of Alakus cannot reach worlds, Malmaila Lamata. The Chitsainius the, the model of Ishtalshalos is about Tzir and Matthias. And now the godliness comes into Sphiris and they have form and they have definition and they have limit. That's how it descends from a higher level to a lower level. The Pnimius idea of Sphiris, which is Kamayim Aponim Laponim can leave Adam al Adam, how after there is a Ishtalshalos, there is a, I use this word, Eir more than once, but the Rebbe doesn't use that word at all. Of the world towards Alakus allows for the notion of Pshitos, of Ein Seif, and world having a connection. And the idea of Kamayim Aponim Laponim, Kenleve Adam Ala Adam, which allows, in a Eir way, in a reciprocal way, for the Pshitos of Ein Seif to have to do with worlds, affects a much higher and deeper revealing of Ein Seif in the world, because even Ein Seif in this Pshitos has Sphiris, as our Maimah is going to explain, and is able to reach worldliness. So it's really backwards, in other words. What the Ebishter created is lower than what is created by the creation once it's been created. What the Ebishter creates naturally is Chitzenius, it's Sphiris, it's Midis. And what happens as a result of the world's Reflecting themselves back on the alakus kamayim aponim laponim, can leave adam ala adam, is a, a deeper and a higher alakus reaching worldliness because somehow the kamayim aponim laponim can leave adam ala adam allows for, the, for a higher pshitas of ain safe to be sweeter and to come into worlds. This is more or less the direction that the maimet has had. Um, it's not what we learned in the third class and the fourth class, which is what I read. Uh, we started reading uh, Sif uh, Dalet. In the first class, we read Dalet and Hey and Vav. In the last class, we read Zion. We're now ready to start Ches. Um, but in the introductory class, the second class that I gave you, this is how I explained it to you, and now I'm repeating it again. That there is a Hitonius Ishtashos and a Pimis Ishtashos. And again, if you want to see the words inside, if you take a look at page Reish Peites, the, the end of the first paragraph of Sif Tes, the second line from the end, it says, And the Pnimius comes after the Chitzenius, and it exceeds the initial Esesphiris, which are the basis for the idea of Kamayim Aponim Laponim, can lay Adam Adam. I just want to remind you that the Rebbe already said, in footnote, forty-three, that although I, as I'm teaching this to you, I'm sort of dividing them up into two histalshalos. There's an initial histalshalos, which is chitzanias. Then there's a subsequent histalshalos, which goes backwards. Which creates or affects a inyan of Pneumius, I'm articulating them as though they're happening chronologically separately. There was the Abish that created the world, and then afterwards is a Kamayim Aponim Laponim. Where the Rebbe suggests in footnote 43 that it's Mineu Bey, Allah Asman Mineu Bey. So that both concepts, the Chitzenius and the Pneumius, where the Rebbe is teaching it to us, are happening at the same time. Um, in other words, the Abish created the world. He created the Chitzenius and he created the Pneumius. L'cha'oira, you have to also assume that since the Pneumius, the second, the Eir version of the Hishtashos and Sphiris, is, is all about Isarusad Latata, Isarusad Le'ela, people, choice, Avoida, going from the bottom up, B'minimlach, B'nish Meseim, Shal Tzadikim, and so on, that in one way or another, there's an Avoida component to this second idea, the idea of Pneumius. But at least in general, the Rebbe um, is trying to explain 
that these two hishtal shaloyos, as I am calling them, the chitzenes neptimius, to one extent or another, one way or another, happening almost at the same time. But in learning this, as we explore this in a limud, and of course when you want to learn something, you have to understand it. In order to understand it, you have to make it real. In order to make it real, you have to have real distinctions. We are going to learn this as though this is a chitzenes first, and then a pnimius subsequent. There's a way the Abish equates say that it's and then the way say that it's recreates itself by mirroring itself, by reflecting itself against the Yen Seif. But this is the easy part of it. What I just shared the last few minutes is the, it's very simple words. The issues as they're presented in the Maimed, however, are unbelievably subtle. Very, very subtle. Why? Because the language of the Maimed is exploring, is exploring the world, the word Yechelis. That's the context. The discussion is about the word Yechelis. Our last class was about Yechelis, and to a considerable degree we contrasted Yechelis and Koyach, which of course is a classic discussion in Hasidus. But today we're not discussing Koyach, we're discussing only Yechelis. The difference between the word Koyach and the word Yechelis is... Koyach means a tool that exists. Hashem has a tool, if you can use those words. It's called a koyach. If you want to say chesed, yeah? Hashem has koyach chesed. That means it's a tool of chesed. On the most basic level, a tool of chesed would mean a keli of chesed. So that would be a harkova. In one way or another, you would have two things. The koyach and the bala koyach. Yechoyles is different. Because yechoyles is... Koyach is yeshne b'metzies babala koyach. There's two things. There's the tools and the owner of the tools. Yechoyles ene b'metzies babala koyach. Yechoyles means a possibility as opposed to a potential. And possibilities don't exist separate from the one who has those possibilities. The fact that it's possible for Hashem to be chesed doesn't mean that Hashem has two things, him and his chesed. It's a possibility. Hashem has infinite possibilities. But the infinite possibilities are a part of his pshitos. That's what the word yochel means. There is nothing but Hashem. And yocholos, yocholtoy, Hashem can do anything He wants. No, if Hashem can do anything He wants, everything and anything exists in Him. But anything and everything exists in Him as it is Him. There is no infinite possible things that I could do. There is simply the pshitos, the plainness of Him that automatically has all the infinite possibilities that the Abishta has. That's what the word Yechoyles means as opposed to the word Koyach means. You see, but our Maimed is going to split a hair. Our Maimed is going to have two Yechoyles. And to maintain a uniformity of form, we're going to call it the Chitzainius of Yechoyles and the Pnimius of Yechoyles. The idea that the Pshitas of the Abishta has a possibility for Svidis, and the idea that the Pshitas of the Abishta even though it's Pashut, the Pshitos has a connection to Sphiris. The first would be the Chitzainius, and the second would be the Pnimius. Now we're going to learn the Maimed inside, and I'll let the Rebbe teach, I'll let the Rebbe talk. I, I tell you before that this is, you have to really pay attention, because it's edel, it's very, very refined. But this is the way you would understand the two levels of Yechelas, the Chitzainius Yechelas, which happens first, so to speak, Melmai Lamata. And the Pnimius Yechelis, which happened second, which is, so to speak, Melmata Lamaila. One of the ideas that the Rebbe told us in the Maimir is that nothing matters for the Ebishter unless the Ebishter chooses that it should matter. There's no such thing as us being able to touch him unless he allows himself to be touched. Or to use the example that the Maimir gives, the reason when you look into the water you see your face, because your face and water are the same Madrege, they're both Gashmis. The idea that what a Yid does can touch HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even though there's such disparateness, only works because he chooses that it should be in the same Madrege. So the Rebbe says, The idea that what we do touches the Yibishter and creates a reciprocity, a mirroring back, because the Yibishter wants that what we do should touch him. When the Yibishter wants that what we do touches him, that creates the Yechoyles for Svidas. Before Hashem wants that what we do should touch Him, you can't even say Yechoyles. You can't even say Shemes. You can't even say there's a possibility for Svidas. 
when the Abishter agrees, decides that what we do should affect him, so by him deciding that what we do affect him, in him there's already the potential for the effect. That's Yechelis. No? Once the Abishter decides that he wants what we do should affect him, and therefore in him there's the potential for us affecting him, then we affect him in fact, right? We do something and it touches him. Let me repeat what I just said a second time. Okay, I'm going to say it again. The word we're dealing with is Yechelis, which is very theoretical because there's no Metzias except for the Meir. The Ba'ala Yechelis. But there's two concepts in Yechelis. The first is Hashem decides that we should be able to affect Him. The moment, at the point which Hashem decides that what we do should be able to affect Him, in Him there's already the possibility of being affected by us. Then we actually do something and we have an effect on Him. So now you ask yourself, Akash. You have two steps, yeah? The first step is that the Abishta decides that we, what we do should be able to touch him. And by the Abishta deciding that what we do should be able to touch him creates in him the possibility of what we could do, right? Tzvidus. Then we actually do something and we actually have an effect on him. So I'm asking you, which of these two sounds Adelid higher and deeper? Of course, anybody would say that the first is higher and Adelid and Philad in the second. Why? Because the first one sets up the second one. When the Abishta decides that what we do should be able to touch him, so in him there's a possibility of what we, what, how we're going to touch him. Before we even touch him, that's very theoretical, as opposed to when we actually touch him. What does this Maimah do? This Maimah says exactly the opposite of what I just told you. This Maimah says that when the Abishta decides that we should be able to touch him. So in him there's a Yechelis for worlds. That's called Chitzenius. Because that means that in the Abish there's already a direction towards worlds. And then when we actually do something. And have an impact on him. That's called Pnimius. Because that's not about godliness being in the direction of worldliness. But rather worldliness being in the direction of godliness. The whole thing is upside down. And you need to take the time. To think this through and understand this clearly, because this is literally what the Rebbe is saying. This is not an embellishment, it's not a pshetel, it's not a pirush. This is what the Rebbe is going to say. The Ebesh creates Esesphiris Agnusis. And in the highest madrig of Esesphiris Agnusis, there's no Esesphiris Agnusis, it's just a yochel, a possibility of Esesphiris. In other words, a possibility that the world should have a relationship with the Ebesh. And then the world touches the Ebesh. When the world touches the Ebesh, there's another dimension of Esesphiris Agnusis. The second dimension, the world, Kvayochel, touching the Ebishter, and the Esesvides created by that touch, are deeper, are more poshot, are more unsafe than the Esesvides, the way the Ebishter, Kvayochel, in his Metzies, in his Moed, in his Tritas of Oyer, wills that what we do should matter to him and that there should be the union of Svides and the Madreig of Yechelos. It's all upside down, it's all backwards. Why we'll see inside, and I'm going to tell you again, the Rebbe is going to prove it, he's going to argue it, he's going to explain it. And after you all finish, you say, but what does it mean? What does it mean? How do we understand it? And I know I can't explain it. I know I can't explain it. I'm preparing these classes, I'm thinking them through. I want to bring us to the point of the wonder. I want to bring us to the point where we say, okay, now we have to think. And the thinking comes down to that when the world touches a lakus, the effect on the Yalakus creates a, 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 a situation, of a, a level, which on the one hand is absolutely ain't safe, and on the other hand is absolutely world, which is the highest and the deepest thing. It's absolutely plain, it's absolutely ain't safe, and it's absolutely about worlds. And it creates the ultimate phenomena of the Pshitas of Yalakus reaching the Metzias of worlds. But the Higoyen, the theory that is the basis for understanding this is, is very, it's hard to understand mathematically, technically, and it's very, very difficult to derhel, to sense, to experience in what's really the struggle of a person who's trying to understand chassidus, to have a derhel and elokus, in this case, the pshitas of elokus, and how the pshitas of elokus also has a relationship with the worlds. So I'm not going to waste any more time, let's read. Vihine. Periches. Bottom of page, Reish Periches. It was discussed earlier. In explaining the Pasuk, 
Kemayim haponim leponim. Yeah, physically, you look into the water, you see yourself. Why? Since the water has no pre-definition, whatever you show the water, the water is going to show you back. So when you look into the water, you see yourself. When you talk about physical water, actual water. One looks into that water. You see mirrored back, reflected back, the face that you put into the water comes back to you. And you'll see later in the moment, the Rebbe is going to emphasize that there's two separate steps. The first step is the impression that you make on the water. And the second step is what the water gives you back. Now physically, there are no two things, because physically, it's only light, right? But metaphysically, in the nimshal, what you look at, you leave an impression, you leave an impression of yourself in the water, that's number one, and then the water gives you back for what you gave it. Those are two different steps. In the nimshal, as you'll see later on, al yeinim, which is pichas deinitif. The same is true when we talk about the waters in Elakus, and over here, the waters in Elakus, Ma'im yen doesn't mean Atzilus, Ma'im yen means Atik, Pshitas Elakus, the plainness of the Yen Seif, the Yen Seif. Da'yadei halos manda svidis ponim. By the S is svidis of Atzilus, which are ponim, which are a face of form, ten svidis. Going upwards, Er Chazer, towards the Pshitas of Edein Seif, Le Edein Seif, to the Pshitas of Atik, to the Pshita Vedin Seif, Nase Be Inyana Svidis, as the Svidis Agnusis, it forms in the Pshita of the Edin Sof, ten Svidis. But the ten Svidis that form in the Pshita of Edin Seif, on the one hand they're Svidis, and on the other hand they're part of the Pshita of the Edin Seif, as you're going to see soon. However, Vizeh, and this phenomenon, Shayadei Allah Asman, that when the Svidis of Atsilas ascend upwards, Towards the Pshitas of Ein Seif, towards Atik. Nasis Svidas Beit Ein Seif. The Tziyur of Atzilas impresses on the Pshitas of Ein Seif that in the Pshitas of Ein Seif there should be Esses Svidas. Why does this work? In other words, why does Isarusa de Latata, Isarusa de Eila work? Is Humipnesha Gam Lifneze Yeshle Shaiches Lat Svidas. Before the face of Atzilas impressed it upon itself on the Ein Seif, the Shittas of Erenseif of Atik, there was already a possibility in the Shittas of Erenseif of Atik for Esses Fetus. What is that? That is the Eibishter's decision that we should be able to touch him. And the Eibishter's decision that we should be able to touch him is called Esses Fetus Agnosis. The idea that Hashem decided that Erenseif should be touched by us is the degree to which you have in the Esses, in the Erenseif Shittas, Esses Fetus. Bedugma Smayim, like water, the only reason water reflects the face, which looks into them, the water is a physical thing, the face of the person is a physical thing, so they interface, they interact. The Rebbe asked us a while back, right? It was Pedic Vav, I suppose, Pedic Hey, Pedic Vav. How can we touch Ein Safe? We're totally different. And the answer is, we touch ain't safe because Hashem wills us to touch ain't safe. So if we touch ain't safe because Hashem wills us to touch ain't safe, from the point where Hashem wills, the ain't safe is already connected to us before we touch. And then we touch and we have an impact. So what you have here at Abu Isai is two concepts in Esses Fides, Hagnuzis, both on the Madreig of Yechailis, very theoretical. That this, the first Yechailis is the Ebishter's decision that what we do should Touch him. The Abish's decision that we do should touch him causes that in the 18th safe pshitas does the yachelis as a in an anticipatory way that tomorrow we're going to touch the ain't safe and create as a in it. Then there's the kamayim upon him upon him that the sphiras of atzilus which are tzir raise themselves up and touch the face the pnimius of the face of mayim the pshitas of mayim of atik of ain't safe and they reflect back. That's also called Yechelis. Why? Because there is no Svidus in Ein Seif. There's only Pshitas of Ein Seif. Ein Seif is Pashat. The phenomenon of ten Svidus in the Ein Seif is it's a part of the Pshitas of the Ein Seif. There's a possibility for Svidus. That's the degree of Tzir. And the, again, this is a repetition probably for the third time today alone. You would think that the second form of Yechelis, of Esesvidus Agnosis, is much closer to us, is much more metheistic than the first idea of Yechelis, of Esesidus Agnosis. 
And the whole argument of the Rebbe is going to be exactly the opposite. In other words, the worlds where the Abish to create them have more metzias than the worlds that are created by people through halos man to affect that in the pshitas of ain't safe they should be svidas. And let's read it inside. Vitzarach bir. The Rebbe makes his case by asking a question. We know that we have two ideas. And we're calling them, I am calling them, Chitzenius and Pnimis, which is the language of the Rebbe on the next page near the bottom, as I showed you. Chitzenius means how the Abishta made the world, and Pnimius means how the worlds, so to speak, are recreated by the impression that they make in the Ein Seif, and how that impression that's made in the Ein Seif reflects itself back again to the world. So the Rebbe says, I don't understand the difference between the first concept, as the Sphere means where the Abishta created the possibility in Oyer, that we should be able to touch him. And the second concept of Eses Fides Dagnudis, which means how in the Pshitas of Ein Seif you have Sfides, based on the fact that Kamayim upon him lapon, that we touch the Ein Seif. The key on Chagam Eses Fides Agnuzis. Since the second concept of Eses Fides Agnuzis, what you and I are calling the Pnimius concept of Eses Fides which is Kamayim upon him and the the way the world touches the Pshitas of Ein Seif and impresses the Pshitas of Ein Seif. Does doesn't mean that in the Ein Seif there's Sfidus. It only means that the Pshitas of Ein Seif has the possibility for Sfidus. Canal Siv Zayin, as we discussed in the previous class. Ule Idach, on the other hand, Gam Ha'edin Seif, also the godliness, which is Shalamayla Mesa Sfidus. Before the worlds impress themselves upon the Ein Seif, to impress on the Ein Seif as his fetus. There is the Abishta's will that what we do should touch him. And the moment, the point at which the Abishta wills that we do should touch him, in him there's already the possibility for what's going to happen once we touch him. Right? Hamayim Shabahem Nidim upon him. The water before the face has been reflected into it. But the water, the way it's been brought close enough to be able to be touched by a face. And in the Nimshul, this means the eight ain't safe. How it's been affected by the Abishta's will and not, what we do, should affect him. Says the Rebbe, Yesh Lai Shaykhaz the Sphinus also was connected to Sphinus. So here's the Rebbe's point. What the world does to ain't safe, which I'm calling Pneumius, is only create your chalice. There's no reality in the ain't safe except for a possibility. What the Abishta does to ain't safe, when he affects that what we do should touch the ain't safe, is also only a chalice. So what's the difference between two yechelis? What's the difference between this yechelis and this yechelis? Both of those yechelis are only yechelis and not kaya. You have one thing, pshitas of ein seif. And in the pshitas of ein seif, you have one idea, eses fides agnuzis, the idea that the pshitas of ein seif has a very theoretical connection to eses fides. Which means ultimately that even though it's pashot, it connects to tziyur and it can come into kelim. But there's two parts. There's the chitzenius, where the abishta willed that what we do should touch the ein seif. And there's the Pneumius, when we actually touch the Ein Seif and impress as the Sfidus on the Ein Seif. In both cases, you don't have actual Sfidus, you just have Yochel. And in both cases, there is, on the other hand, the Yocheles for Sfidus. So what is the difference between the former and the latter? What is the difference between how the Ebishter set it up and how we complete it? What is the difference between the first step, which is the Chitzenia step, and the second step, which is the Pneumia step? I'll read again from five lines from the bottom of the page. The question is, the Kivan, whereas, even the Pneumius can't do which means how we, how Atzilus touches and impresses itself upon the Ein Seif. Does not actually create in the Ein Seif Sfidus. It's just a possibility for Sfidus. Can I'll save Zion? Will Idach, on the other hand, even before we impress anything on the Ein Seif. The Ein Seif exists before we make an impression. But the way the Ein Seif has brought close enough to us that we should be able to make an impression on it, which the Rebbe calls in the parenthesis, the water in which the face is seen. In other words, the fact that the Ein Seif, in spite of the Pshitas, has been affected by the Ebishtas' will, that we should be able to touch it. Also, yesh le shaykh as sphiris is also connected to sphiris. So the question becomes, ma'u achilik she ben shnei yon yon. Second line from the bottom of the page. What's the difference between these two ideas? You have two concepts that I use, if you wanted to use Haskal language, that are both yeah and they're both no. They're both yeah, they're both connected to as sphiris. And they both know there's no actual sphiris, it's actually gavnim, any colors or character in any of them at all. 
Ein Seif is Poshid Betachat Abshitas. Ein Seif is one. And has the possibility for all Sphiris. And the Abishta desires that we should be able to touch the Ein Seif, it's still one. When we touch the Ein Seif, in fact, so we, even though we're touching Ein Seif with our hand, and our hand is Tzir, our hand is not Pshitas, but when our hand touches the Ein Seif, it leaves from what our hand is in the Pshitas of the Ein Seif. When our hand, so to speak, touches the Ein Seif and leaves from what is our hand in the Pshitas of Ein Seif, our hand becomes a part of the Pshitas of Ein Seif. So in both cases, you're connected to Sfiris. In the first, because Hashem willed that we should be able to touch Him. In the second, because we're actually touching Him. And in, at the same time, in both cases, there's no actual Metziyas, there's only Yechelis. So the question becomes, Ma'u achilik And the Rebbe gives a very, very Haskalah answer. That in the Metziyas, they're the same. But the Tnu is different. In reality, they're the same, but the direction, they're different. What's the difference in direction? When the Eibishter will that we should be able to touch him, the Eibishter is willing for the Ein Seif to come closer to worldliness. huh? When we affect that we touch him, this is not how godliness is coming to worldliness, but how worldliness is raising itself up into godliness. And therefore the latter, which comes after, is deeper than the former, which comes before. Let the Rebbe talk now. Listen to the words. It's Mamish Haskola. Emis Haskola. The inyan hayecheles al eize dover hu. The idea that there's a possibility for something. You have a possibility to throw the ball to the east. Yeah. You have you have a strength to throw a ball. That's how my teacher taught it to me. You have a strength to throw a ball, but you don't have a separate strength to throw east or west or north and south because in your arm there's no directions. In the world there's directions. So there's a possibility to throw east and a possibility to throw west and a possibility to throw north. Yeah. So the possibility for you to do something as it exists in you doesn't really exist. It's just a possibility. But the very fact that it's possible is a direction towards that idea. The inyan hayacheles alayi zedavar hu. The concept of having a possibility to do something means shahadavar yachaliyas. Look at the word italicized. Hadavar. It's about the thing. The eibish has a possibility for sfiris. When you say the Eibish is the possibility for Sfiris, the emphasis is not on the word Eibish there, the emphasis is on the word Sfiris, the Dover. Even though the idea that in the Pshitas of Ain't Safe, there's a possibility for Sfiris, is not in any way, shape, or form. Sfiris, in fact, Vinyane, who in all it is, Zeshah Etzem, Uyachal, then as much as the Eibish is an Etzem, there's a possibility. Top of page, Reish Peites, Tiyadu Achilag, Mekeach, Liyachelis. It's a classic discussion in Chasidus, and we talked about it at length in the previous class. The difference between Keach and Yechelis is Keach, as Yeshne, Bimitzis, Babala, Keach, and Yechelis is Eni, Bimitzis, Babala, Yechelis. So, when you say that the Abish has a possibility to be touched by worldliness, there's nothing of worldliness in that possibility. Nevertheless, the very fact that we're talking about the Abish, and we're speaking of him in terms of having a possible relationship with the world, we're saying that in the Atmos of Elokus, there is a Kach Vakach, Possibility. There's a possibility for something. So the direction is actually from inside to outside. So, Hashem decides what we do should touch Him. When Hashem decides what we do should touch Him, in Him there's nothing other than the possibility of being touched. But what's the direction? The direction is, how in the Abish there's a possibility we should touch him. So emphasis is on us. So even though it's Yochel, it's totally Pasha Batachas Apshitis, it's called Chitzenius. Chitzenius means where it's going towards being affected by worldliness. It's going towards worldliness. Now goes the other side of the coin, as opposed to what we're going to be calling in our mind, Pnimius. Vashayich is the Eidin Seif, Lisfid is the Mayim Leponim as opposed to the second idea. The second idea is that we should be able to touch Ein Seif and impress upon Ein Seif Svides. Says the Rebbe, That's not how there is a possibility in the Ein Seif 
to go towards Sfiris and Tzir. Ela Adarabba to the contrary, Shet Tzir has Sfiris, Yochaliyeis, Be'erin say, that even though Hashem and Oyer is Pasha Betachat Apshitos, there's the possibility that in Pasha Betachat Apshitos, there should also be Sfiris. So in the second idea, the, look at the italicized word, three lines in the top, it's the word Be'erin Seif. The last line on Banu Reish Peches, the italicized word is Shahadavad. Right? Three lines on Banu Reish Peches, the italicized word is Bedin Seif. What does that mean? When the Abishta creates the world, even the way the world is part of the Pshitas, it's going towards Dover, towards world. But when world touches Bedin Seif, the emphasis is not on world, it's on Ein Seif. So therefore it works out, it's all upside down, all counterintuitive. The way the Eibishter creates worlds, and it comes from a higher level to a lower level, and the highest level is only a Yechelis, which means the Eibishter's decision that we should do should touch him. That Yechelis is Pasha Betachas Apshitis, there's absolutely no Metzias other than Apshitis of Ein Seif, but that Yechelis is a Yechelis Lehadavar to worldliness, to Sfiris, as opposed to Kamayim Aponim Leponim, when the world already exists with the Tzir, and it's impressing itself upon the Ein Seif. When the tzir of sfiris impressing itself upon the ain safe, the emphasis is not on the tzir of sfiris, it's on the word ain safe. So the Rebbe continues, Fagam shagam inyin zehu yerida. There's no question that even the primius model, which is kamayim upon him lepon, where the words touch ain safe and impressed upon the pshitas of ain safe, the inyan of sfiris, it's not the same thing as it ain safe kemeju mitzad atzme ain safe as it is by itself. Why? The beid ain safe mitzad atzme ain safe as it is by itself which means before the Abish had decided that we should be able to touch them all together. And if you were here in last week's class, it's the second of the four things we talked about, right? The highest thing is Atzma. The second thing is Eid with Adnan Shaykh's Tzfidus. The third thing is where the Abish wills that what we do should touch him. And the fourth thing is that Tzfidus Sagnosis. So the Madreg, the second Madreg in last week's discussion, where you have no, where the Eid in Seif exists, there's no connection to the world whatsoever. The Eid in Seif meets Ad Atzma, Eid in Seif as it is by itself, in Yachas Klal, in Yen has no relationship with Sfiris whatsoever. The canal, as we learned in the Sif Hay in the previous Shiurim, when you say that an intellectual idea has no connection to color, it's not the Pshat that has no direct connection but has some kind of remote connection. They're in two different universes. One is a physical thing and one is a metaphysical thing. Levin Ve'ed. Similarly, the Pshat of Ein Seif, before the Abishta wills that we should touch him, has nothing to do with Sfiris. And therefore, Ella, it is only. Uh, if you've lost the place, I'm six lines from the top of page Reish Petes. The first thing that happens, Hashem wants. That the Sfiris should be, which means Atzilas, should be able to ascend and touch the Pshitas of Ein Seif. And when the Abishter wills, Abishter decides that Ein Seif, that Ein Seif will be touchable. By Yeses Fides, so simply the decision that ain't safe should be touchable by world, so then you have in Pshitas of Ain't Safe a relationship with Sfides, which is the first step of Yeses Fides, second news. So, in both cases, there is a relationship with world. There's a level of Ain't Safe which has nothing to do with world, that's not part of our discussion. Then there's a level of Ein Seif which has to do with world, and then the Ein Seif which has to do with world, we're talking about Yechelis. No world exists yet in the Ein Seif. It's only a possibility for world. And in this Yechelis, there's two ideas. The Abish's decision that the Ein Seif should have to do with world, and how the worlds touch and affect, them, affect themselves on the Ein Seif. Both of them, says the Rebbe, are at Simtsum, are less than the Ein Seif, which has nothing to do with worlds. But when you compare and contrast the two, the first being how Hashem created the possibility ain't safe that the world should touch him. And the second being how the worlds actually touch and impress themselves upon the Pshittas of ain't safe, it turns out that the second is Pneumius and the first is Chitzenius. Mekomakim nevertheless. Hatfis asmokim da'alo asman da'asfidis. The second idea, what we call the Pneumius idea, that what Sfidis do in ascending from Atzilus to the Pshittas of ain't safe and touching the ain't safe. Hushaman Shalahem yitvis mokim etzle, that the Sfiris of Atzilus should be able to raise themselves up and touch the Pshitas of Ein Seif, says the Rebbe shall yidei alo asman tiyam shachas Ein Seif. The point is 
Not that the Esesphetus touches the Ein Seif, so the Ein Seif should give us back Sphetus. The point is that the Esesphetus touched the Ein Seif, that the Ein Seif should give us back Ein Seif. And therefore, it's all upside down. Hashaych is the Ein Seif Lisphetus. The connection with the Ein Seif is Sphetus. The second idea that what we do, what the world does, touch the pictures of ain't safe. He's there is should be ain't soft after later steer the spheres that are the ain't safe. There could be the form of spheres, but the emphasis is notice the italicized word again is ain't safe. So the way the Abish created the possibility and earth to relate to the world. And the way the world touches and impresses itself on the Pshittas of Ein Seif, the second turns out to be deeper than the former. Because the former is the way the Pshittas of Ein Seif is going towards world. And the second is the way world is trying to reach the Pshittas of Ein Seif. And here the Rebbe says, Velachei. The Rebbe is going to repeat himself. I am now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines in the end of the paragraph, in the middle of the line. Velachei, accordingly. Hayacheles the Sfetis. The first idea, the chitzenius idea, the way the Abish decided that what that the world should be able to touch its ain't safe before the world has touched the ain't safe, which is the possibility in the ain't safe for svidus. Kivin chenyan hu shachalias svidus. Notice the italicized word. The idea is that it should be svidus. Nikra b'shem svidus. So you say about the pshitas of ain't safe that's already called svidus. Es is svidus hagnuzis. The ten svidus, they're only in a state of yecheles. But what's the Russian on the previous page? Shahad dava yecheles. How when the yecheles of the Ebrish is already the dover in a state of yecheles. You never have such edel language in my modem. My modem usually contrasts yecheles and yekayach. We're trans- contrasting yecheles and yecheles. The yecheles where the Ebrish created it and the yecheles where man impresses it. But here it's backwards. The Yecheles, where the Abish created, it's Yecheles Ladovar. It's where the Abish creates the possibility for godliness, to have a connection to worldliness, so the direction is towards worldliness, or towards Svidus. Venemar Bazer, and we would speak about these ten Svidus Agnuzas where the Abish had willed, that what we do should touch him, even though we haven't touched him yet, Loshen Sola. You would say it's an emanation, it's revealed. Ukemuvel il, Sivzayin, Madrushim, it's called Eser Shemer, it's supposed to Shem Echad. In addition, the idea that in the Eden Seif there's a possibility for Svidus, who lay mitzah the Eden Seif, is not because of the Eden Seif, Ella the Halos man, the Svidus, because the Svidus are going to impress themselves upon the Eden Seif. Okay, so now you have to understand this very carefully. The reason in Eden Seif, the reason in Yechels, there is a Yechelus for Sfiris, is because in the world there is Sfiris. But the point here is that since in the world there is Sfiris, the Abish's Yechelus towards Sfiris is emphasizing the idea of Sfiris. So even though it's Pasha, even though it's Yechel, but it's Yechelus for the Dover. So and here we're still talking about the first idea, the way the Abish that created the possibility in Ain Seif that we should be able to touch him. When the Abish that created the possibility and ain't safe that we should be able to touch him, that ain't safe is going towards being touched. So therefore the Svidas that are in that Madreg of Yecheles are about Hadover, are about the Svidas. On the other hand, now we go over the other way now. But when there is a descent in ain't safe, Shiyir Be'ef, we're no longer talking about the possibility for us to touch ain't safe, but rather, when we actually touch Ein Seif, that the ten spheres of Atzilus, so to speak, from earth to heaven, from Atzilus to Ein Seif, touch Elakus. Here the Rebbe says, Ein Zed, this isn't. When we touch the Pshittas of Ein Seif with our hand, with our spheres, so to speak, the whole idea is that we're not creating in the Ein Seif a thing. Elohu Ein Ein Seif Atzmitz, the Ein Seif itself. Dugmas hamayim, like for example, water. Shein be'ef and kazed that they're in such a fashion. Shein nidas bem upon him, hamistakelos behem, that you see in the water the face that looks into them, but there is no face in the water. There's just water. So the, you look at the water, and the water gives you back your face. On the one hand, you're seeing your face. On the other hand, the face that's being given back to you is really only water, because in the water there isn't your face. 
So this becomes the point at which we must stop and meditate. You have to think about this, okay? What are we really saying? We're really saying that there's the Eibishter, and then there's the Eibishter as has a relationship with the world, right? That's what we're saying. There's the Eibishter, and the Eibishter has a relationship with the world. In as much as the Eibishter has a relationship with the world, no matter how posh it it's going to become, it's going towards the world. Then there's a second idea, that world can touch the Eibishter. When the world is put in a position that it can touch the Eibishter, it's not only touching the Eibishter, which has a connection to the world, it's touching the Eibishter. And therefore, the second concept, although it happens after the first concept and it's based on the first concept, turns out to be deeper than the first concept. The idea that the Eibishter wants a world, from the moment, yesh le yecheles lahadover, yecheles means there's nothing except his possibility, but it's possibility for a world that's going towards worldliness. But when you say that the world, and in this case, Kamayim Aponim Aponim, the Sviris of Atzilus, are touching the Pshitas of Einsev, the moment the Sviris of Atzilus are touching the Pshitas of Einsev, the emphasis is on the word Pshitas of Einsev, or in the words of the Maimed, Eid Einsev, Eid Einsev Atzme. Therefore, the way the world impresses itself upon the Einsev is how the ain't safe as it is by itself has a connection to spheres. So as I explained to you, I think pretty clearly, Chitzonius is the first version, so to speak, the Er Yosher version. Pnimius is the second version, again, so to speak, the Er Chayzer version. And the reason I'm saying so to speak is because the Rebbe never uses the words Er Yosher and Er Chayzer. And as I told you in the beginning of today's class, that in footnote 43, the Rebbe tries to tell us that they're really not... Uh, um, consecutive, but um, at the same, that one after the next, not successive, but they're simultaneous. There's chitzenius and there's pnimius. But the chitzenius is is yecheles ledavar, and the pnimius is the yecheles as is part of the pshitas of Einsev. So the kamayim aponim leponim, when Atzilas taught you the pshitas of Einsev, turns out to be deeper than the possibility in the Einsev that the Eibishter wills to be touched. When the Eibishter wills that the Ein Seif should be touched by us, it's going lehadav. And when the Pshittas of Ein Seif is actually touched, that's the Pshittas of Ein Seif. And let's start say Pidik Tez, Vihine. Mevur ba'adrushim. The Rebbe Rashab's Maimir explains. Sha'aponim anidim ba'amayim. When you look into the water and you impress your face, and then your face comes back to you. And as I told you earlier, in the nimshal, for sure, there's two steps. The first step is the impression that the person's face leaves on the water. And the second is how the water gives it back. So when you impress yourself on the water and the water gives back to you your face, there really is no thing that's your face. It's only the water. It says, Any tziur comes not from the water, but from someplace else. If the tzir is in the potential of the water, like the yecheles lahadava, then in the yecheles is already yecheles lahadava. But since this tzir has nothing to do with the pshitas, with the yecheles, it's coming from someplace else, from kamayim upon him. So when there is an impression of kamayim upon him on the pshitas of ain't safe, in as much as that impression is, it's on the mayim atzmam, on the water themselves. If the face that you see in the water would come from the water itself, that would mean that in the water you have two separate things, the water and the face. Like dogim shabiyam, water with fish in the sea, which is not true. Since the impression of a face on the water is not part of the water, it's coming from outside of the water, there's nothing separate being formed from the water. Only the waters themselves. In other words, in other words, in, in a sentence, everything works the opposite of how you think. It's all oxymoronic. When you talk about the interface between Pshitas and Seer, 
between plainness and form, between Yecheles and Metzias. Anything which is a Yecheles for something already has a connection to that thing. As opposed to, when you're talking about Pshitos, that's not a Yecheles for something, but that something is impressing itself upon that Pshitos. When something outside of the Pshitos is impressing itself upon the Pshitos, the entire Tzirs come from outside of the Pshitos. So the pshitas remains intact. Hashem's decision that we should be able to touch Him makes Him have a connection to us. Our actually touching Him means that He is whatever He is and we are touching Him as He is. So if we are touching Him as He is and then that reflected back to us, what we're getting back is not our touch, but Him. Let's keep reading. That's how you understand it in the nimshal. The kiva, considering the fact the zeh the second idea, the pnimius idea, that the Sviras of Atils touched the Yain Seif. And by touching the Yain Seif, they impressed upon the Yain Seif that there should be a Yechelis for Sviras. Says the Rebbe, It isn't that in the Yain Seif there's a potential for Sviras. It's in the Yain Seif there's only Yain Seif. And the Sviras come from outside the Yain Seif. Therefore, accordingly, they're not something other than the Eid ain't safe itself. Elohu Eid ain't safe atzmis, ain't safe itself. So when the Abisha decides that we should touch him, the Abisha decision we should touch him has a connection to us because he decided that we should be able to touch him. But when we touch him, in fact, we're touching him. See, even though logically, commonsensically, Intuitively, the second is so much lower than the first because the second is about us reaching al And the first is about al deciding that he wants us to allow to be able to reach him. In reality, it's the other way around. Why? Because the Abish's decision that we should be able to touch him means the Abish's decision that there should be a connection to him and the world. When we touch him, in fact, we're not touching only him as he has a relationship to the world, we're touching him. And therefore, the him that we touch, which then reciprocates to us from that touch, is him. And that comes, and here comes the key line, Val and accordingly you have the following conclusion. When you talk about the ten hidden spheres, and in this case, the idea of hidden spheres, if you were here in the last class, if you paid attention to the last class, the whole definition of Esas Agnus in this moment is, quote, Ein Metzias Lagnusis. Esas Agnus is no Metzias. Which is why we only had two levels and not three levels, right? Kailal and Neise. We're talking about the higher Madrigan Esas Agnusis, Neise, Yechelis. And in the highest madrig of Ezzasir Sagnuzis, Noise and Yechelis, there's two levels. Chitzainius in Yonamu Yechelis, Lesfiris. The Chitzainius madrega is what happens first. The Abishter willed, huh? The Abishter willed that we should be able to touch him. But the Abishter willing that we should be able to touch him, we haven't touched him yet. So, in what way is there in him, in the Ain Safe world, the Yechelis for Sfiris? In other words, the going the direction of world. And in the Lushan of the Rebbe on the bottom of the previous page, Shahadava Yachalias. Ube Pnimius. The deeper level, hey, made in safe is the Eid in safe. So as it turns out, Kamayim Haponim Leponim is deeper than before Kamayim Haponim Leponim. The Abishta creates a world. And the Abishta creates a world, you go from one to many, from Pshitas to Tzir, from made safe to a world, yes? So there's a point at which the Abishta wants. The point at which the Ebishter wants is still Pshitos and it still ain't safe and it's only Yechelis, but it's Pshitos, it's Hadav Yechelis. And then there is how the world touches the ain't safe. When the world touches the ain't safe, it doesn't touch only the Madrege where Hadav Yechelis, it touches ain't safe itself. And because it touches ain't safe itself, when ain't safe then gives us back what we gave, by touching it, it's not giving us back us, it's giving us back itself. This is what we learned. Now you need to understand what, how difficult this is. Because the whole point is related, relationships. The whole point is relatability. The whole idea is that godliness and worldliness should meet. No, if godliness and worldliness meet, they have to have some common ground. The common ground is called Oyer. The common ground is called Giloy. The common ground is called Tziur, 
right? Oyed is one thing, Gili is a lower thing, and Tzir is even a lower thing. No? So the, when Oyed goes from being Oyed to being Gili, and when Oyed Gili goes from being Gil to being Tzir, it comes closer and closer to worldliness, right? But in as much as coming closer and closer to worldliness, it's less of the Ein Seif. Here the Rebbe is introducing us to an incredibly wild idea. What's the wild idea? That this limitation, that for godliness to relate to worldliness, it becomes less. Yeah, first it's Oyed, then it's Gilu, then it's Tzir. So the connection to Sviras, that's the Chitenius model. What's the Pneumius model? The world touches Ein Seif. And the world touches Ein Seif. Ein Seif gives back to the world from that touch. On the one hand, what's giving back is, is the Sviras, the Kamayim upon the Panam, what was what touched the Pshitas of Ein Seif. On the other hand, it's not giving back what touched, it's giving back itself. In other words, the ultimate hybrid, hybrid of Sviras Pshutim and Sviras Mitzuyarim are being described here. On the one hand, the Sviras are absolutely ain't safe because what we're getting is ain't safe. On the other hand, what we're getting is absolutely Tzir and Sviras because it's based on Kamayim upon Laponim. And I, I will admit, I'm not explaining this. I'm bringing us to speak to the precipice, to the horizon of meditation and thought. But I'm going to stop here because I cannot go further, because I don't understand it any better. This is, in other words, I learned the Maimit with Hashem's help. I taught the Maimit with Hashem's help. I hope I taught it correctly. I hope you understand what I meant and taught, and I hope what I meant and taught was correct. But you come away with an extraordinary conclusion that the world gets the most from the Eibishter only on the basis of what the world touches the Eibishter. Because anything that comes from the Eibishter to the world, unilateral, the Eibishter directly, is already worldly. It's Dava Yachalias. As opposed to when the world touches the Eibishter, it's touching the Eibishter as the Eibishter is by himself. And then the Eibishter gives back to us what he is by himself. But we touched him. So there's the ultimate hybrid of Tziyud and Pshitos and Oyer. It's Tziyud because it's Kamayim upon him, upon him. And it's Pshitos is because it's Eirin Seif Atzma. And I'm going to leave this alone. Allow us all to think about it. And I, I hope we uh, treat this Maimir with the tender, loving attention and care that it deserves and not simplify it and not generalize and not metziasize and that had a little bit of the Edelkeit of the Deus that they never share. And we'll continue with Shem in the next class.